cheated, lied to, or tricked, she's tackling every opportunity to make something that went wrong right. Better Call Bacon is on your side. The Tarpon Springs City Commission is responding to a Better Call Bankin investigation about a city rule that's keeping a daughter from honoring her late father. Now, this is the first time commissioners have sat down to discuss the handling of headstones in the city cemetery. Shannon Bankin joining us now with details. One commissioner made two proposals, one to help this family and one to change the rules so no other family has to go through this. Tarpon Springs city-owned Cycadia Cemetery is full of beautiful headstones. Margie Bridges has been fighting since May to add one for her father, William Bridges, a World War II veteran. You die and you get a tombstone. You get buried and you get a tombstone. That is the natural scheme of things. Her story highlights the consequences of an old city rule that says only the owner of the plot can authorize a headstone. And if that owner passes away without a will, Loved ones like Margie have to get a court order to get a headstone. The reasoning? Some fear the city could be sued if family members disagree over the wording on the headstone. Vice Mayor Jacob Carr wants to change this rule and also proposed an exception for the Bridges family. But I do feel that requiring someone to spend thousands of dollars to go through probate um, isn't something that we should be doing from a city side and we should really be looking towards a human humanitarian side of uh, someone losing somebody. My Better Call Bank and Report caught the attention of several residents. But you'd never have to be mean to people about this kind of stuff. And that's what I think the family and the reporter were upset about. The cold-hearted nature of the way the city of Tarpon Springs was treating them. It's just plain disrespectful. One resident spoke against loosening the strict rule. Are we going to get sued if we do this? What's going to happen? You need to stick to your rules and regulations. The commissioners approved having staff draft a plan to allow families a simple headstone with a name and dates of birth and death. But I'm definitely in favor of adding some flexibility here um, as well as the exception. But two were hesitant. Correcting one thing that may be a, appear wrong to, that may appear to be a wrong is going to create other wrongs that unintended consequences, if you will. Commissioner Carr also proposed an exemption that would allow the Bridges family to immediately place a headstone on the grave. That motion failed, though, with two of the four commissioners voting no. This just feels a little baffling because yeah. you, I, I want to understand what their concerns are, but you start to like play it out like what kind of rabbit hole do you think you're going to get down with other families? So what about a veteran marker for this particular family? Is there a way to properly honor him now? Well, he is a veteran, so I was able to help Ms. Bridges get with a local funeral home to order a flat veteran marker, and it should be laid down soon at the foot of the grave. She's still working now with an attorney who came forward after our story to help her go through the probate process so that she can buy a headstone. Unfortunately, this rule change may not come fast enough to spare this family this headache and possibly a very big expense. It's pretty maddening, so it I is. hope you stay on it. Thank you, Shannon.